looking back over, over your life from the early years forward, who are the people who've been most significant in helping you develop yourself, your talents, your skills? Who, who, who made the most, um, who did the most? I had a teacher in the sixth grade, Verdley Bright, mm -hmm. who is still alive in her mm -hmm. 90s. And Miss Bright had two sisters and knew all of our relatives. And that was one thing about then. Uh, teachers went to your homes. They lived in your community. And uh, they knew who you were. And if you did not behave, they talked to your relatives. Well, I had this great aunt, Pauline Slater, who was the first African-American teacher in the Los Angeles Unified School District. Mm. Her good friend was the first black, and it was Bessie Burke was the first black principal in the LA Unified School System. And so my aunt, who never married, you know, was a spinster school mm -hmm. teacher. She fit the profile of mm -hmm. what a teacher should have been during those days. Uh, she talked with my mother. She talked with all of these nieces and nephews she had. And she made a tremendous impression on me. And so did Miss Bright. We were with her a few months ago, and I said, you know, everything I did in your sixth grade was to please you. Mm -hmm. Because she would walk through that door, and she'd wait five minutes when we came in from recess. And she'd come in, and she'd look around her, and she'd say, that's what I like. So I always wanted to see her pound her fist into her hand mm -hmm. and say, that's what I like. Now, how did she influence me? She had an A, B, C, D and F row. And you know we all struggle to stay in the A and B. Mm -hmm. My you mean if you had an A and then you got a worse grade, you'd have to move back? You have to move back to the B. Okay. And so it gave you something to reach for, and it was done weekly. Mm -hmm. My seatmate, Barbara Floyd, and uh, she was always writing. I can see her now on the steno pad. And so she had beautiful penmanship, so I worked on beautiful penmanship. Mm -hmm. We'd have a spelling test and I would study. And you know, it was little unique kinds of things she would do that I did when I started to teach. Mm -hmm. And she would uh, call us up, she said, you know, grooming is all part of this. And so she'd go around that room and she'd select about six people to go up into the front. I was always in that line because I would go home, I would watch my shoelaces out really? every day. Uh -uh. I would clean my fingernails, be sure my hair was in place, iron my own dresses mm -hmm. so I could stand up there. Mm -hmm. it, she identified in each one of her students what she thought was a skill or a talent. And then she would enhance it. I was a good speller. So I got to take the spelling test home and correct them for her. Really? That's big time, oh, you sure. know. And so, uh, and I knew that she would hold you responsible for your behavior. So when she came in that room, I was sitting in my seat ready to learn. Mm -hmm. And these were the things I tried to invoke in my students when I taught. Mm -hmm. I set my class up just like her class. Uh -huh. And uh, I stopped uh, really uh, reviewing the students' dress and grooming, but we talked about it. But what I did do, I set up a court system in my classroom. Mm -hmm. And because she had, uh, model kinds of projects for us. And uh, if you could spell, you went over here and did this. If you were good in science, if you were good in numbers. And I remember Bernard Williams, uh, uh, I hope he gets a chance to see this because he's changed his name since then. But mm -hmm. she'd go around the room and throw out uh, the multiple, uh, the tables. And she'd say two plus two, you know, four, add five and subtract three. and so and so that's the way she catch you. Mm -hmm. And you never knew when she was going to do this. Mm -hmm. So those things stick with children. And I learned that when I taught school, that you can't humiliate children. It doesn't work. Mm -hmm. You cannot uh, insult them and assault them. It does not work. You have to have them go along with you to understand what you're doing. And let me just give you this little parallel. Uh, when I started teaching, the last teaching position was up in uh, Hollywood at Selma Avenue. And on the first day of school, kids would come in and sit down. I had sixth grade, and I'd give them each a ball of bubble gum, chew it. Oh, Miss mm -hmm. Watson, we can't chew it. No, chew it. Mm -hmm. You have my permission, chew it. 
And then I take them out on the ground. I said, now spit it out. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, we mm -hmm. can't spit it out. I said, spit it out. Now walk in it. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, it will stick to I said, what's going to be our first rule? Mm -hmm. Boys and girls, you can't chew gum in the classroom. Now tell me why. And I'd get them. Now, suppose somebody violates our rule. What are we going to do? Well, we really need to talk about it. So I went back to the room. I said, OK, Johnny over here violated the rule against doing what? Chewing gum. OK, we're going to sit him down in the hot seat. We can say we're going to put him on trial. Right. Can someone defend him? I'll defend him. Can someone accuse him because you saw him chew the gun, you saw him spit it out, and you stepped in it? Yeah. OK. Can, can I get somebody back there that'll listen to both sides? Mm -hmm. And and so we set up a courtroom. We had a judge, we had a jury, and we made our own rules for the classroom. And they understood after a while. I said, who likes to go in your desk and you get your hand stuck in somebody's chewed chewing gum? <laughs> mm -hmm. I said, then we don't put gum underneath. So now, if people break our laws, what do we do? We've got to take them to trial, Ms. Watson. So we come in and we got to go to trial. Mm -hmm. OK, pick your jury. Who's going to be the defense? Who's going to be the prosecutor? Who's going to be the judge? 